Some of the most shocking and interesting things you may ever see in life occur in this place. Now, some of you may have never stepped foot in one. And if you've led a sheltered life, you may not like hearing about it. But you got to admit, if you've ever been in a bar and you've stayed there long enough, you have been witness to ungodly things. <laughs> now, I have not personally been in a bar since... 2013 and before that it was probably three years and the only reason I went in in 2013 I had a friend when I first moved here come visit and we were off on a road trip I think we went to Talamina Trail and at the end of that there was a bar we stopped we had a beer other than that I have not stepped foot in a bar it doesn't even sound fun to me anymore <laughs> I don't even drink anymore so but now back in the day was another story. Uh, I didn't like so much going in nightclubs. I didn't do much of that. I did a little bit of that in my older years. Now, I don't know, midlife crisis, something in my 40s. But mostly it was your neighborhood, typical neighborhood dive bar. Go in there. You always sit in the same spot, you know, like Cheers. You got Norm in his spot. And your buddies over here, you, you, you always see the same people at the same times. And if you're in there during the day, which I work nights most of the time. So one of my days off, I would go in there during the day. Um, it, things are a little more mellow, but if you stay past a certain time, say seven o'clock, that's, that's time to get out. And then it starts to get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have a few stories I'll share, just some of the many that I can even remember. But I remember one particular time I was living in Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma. I was in Nowata, Oklahoma. I was working for a printing company there. And there was a bar named Grumpy's. In fact, I had a travel trailer plugged in in the parking lot at Grumpy's. I lived there. I mean, it was a great, great setup. <laughs> anyway, I'm in there one night, and I strike up a conversation. This guy next to me, we strike up a conversation. Uh, he, He's broke. He wants 100 bucks, and he's going to sell me a house. Well, nobody, we didn't believe him that he had a house. You know, and especially for a hundred dollars. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm living in a in a in a little camper, a sixty nine, twelve foot camper outside of a bar. Let's see what he's got. I mean, he did say it was a fixer upper. So me and him load up. And we go down there and check it out. And yeah, it needed work. I I would tell you. It was in better shape than when I bought this place. It, it was in better shape. So I gave him a hundred bucks. I'm like, and I was making good money. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I know it's probably too good to be true. And it was. The house was condemned. Nobody could own it. He knew that. Never saw the guy again. And I knew I got taken, but, you know. I, you know, when, when liquor starts hitting your, your bloodstream, you do dumb things. It's called liquid courage, but it could also be called liquid stupidity because you do things like that. However, there was another time. This was a bar in Iowa, Norwalk, Iowa. I was in a bar downtown. So yeah, just a small little community in Des Moines. And this old man was set, telling me he had a, uh, a 79 or 80 Caprice, Chevy Caprice, for 150 bucks. Needed a new battery. That was all that was wrong with it. Um, yeah, okay, we had a couple beers, and we went down there and looked at it. and had flat tires. Wouldn't start. 
I said, all right, man, 150. I can get that out of part. I, you know, I can sell parts and get that. So I gave him 150 bucks, went and got a battery, put it in there, fired right up, fired right up. Drove that thing home about 15 miles. It ran perfect. Everything worked. It had electric windows. The heat worked. I don't know about the AC. Uh, you use that very little in Des Moines. This was winter time, but it drove nice. And and I would and I had a brand new truck at the time, pretty much brand new. Uh, but I just drove that old beater. You know, in Des Moines, there's a lot of snow, and you don't want to get rust. So I drove that old beater. That thing ended up becoming a little party wagon because, you know, when I worked at the Des Moines Register, we'd get off about 2, 30, 3 in the morning. And then we'd all, there was a, like a housing addition that they were planning to put in, in the back of the building. But there, were, there was roads, paved roads, but there were no houses built yet. And that was a little cul-de-sac area. We went back in. We drank beer for a couple hours. We went home. And we'd all pile in that car and put the heat on, sit in there. I mean, it was a car. You didn't care if you tore it up or whatever. But that was another bargain I got. Well, the other one wasn't a bargain, but there are so many things you see, though. Another time, I was living in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Actually, I was in a town north of there, but I would go to a bar. They have dry counties in Kentucky like they do in Arkansas, and I happened to live in one of them. And this bar was pretty close to the newspaper I worked at. I'm in there on a Saturday morning, about, uh, I would I say morning, about 1130 and this is a pretty rough and tumble bar. There are they're cleaning up blood pretty often at nighttime. I didn't go in there at nighttime, but it was a cool place to go during the day. Everybody was my age, you know. So I'm in there, didn't have anything going on. It was a Saturday, and this guy pulls in, and the first thing we notice is he's got out of state plates. And he comes walking in, and he starts bad. He says, I can't believe all you hillbillies. And I mean, bad-mouthing everybody. And that's, if there's one thing you don't do in Kentucky, or I wouldn't even try that anywhere in the South, is go in and start running your mouth and telling, telling people you're from Boston. So I grabbed him by the arm. I took him aside. I said, look, I'm saving your life here because there were some pretty rough dudes in there. I said, if you don't walk out of here right now, I can't promise you're going to make it. And uh, they, they wouldn't serve him after that. He got in the car, and we knew there was a bar across the street. We knew he was going to head over there, so we called ahead over there and told them, and they wouldn't let him in. But you just see things like that all the time. And the guy was obviously drunk. I don't know, man. Some of them New Yorkers and people from Boston, they got some they got some mouths on them. So but you don't you don't you don't put your finger in a wasp nest and uh, not expect to get stung. That's just the way it is. But you know, there's, there's so many things that happen in a bar. Uh, you see the, the one guy that, and that was my buddy, Steve. I talked about him in a podcast a couple of times, I think. But you would give this man, he wasn't but 140 pounds, soaking wet. You'd give this man three beers, and it was like, you know, some people could sit there, and I could do that. I could sit there and sip on beer all day. And never act stupid or, you know. But him, after about his third beer, is like a switch turned on. And he was this kind of drunk, you know. Couldn't keep his butt in the bar stool. He'd fall, lean back and he'd fall over. How I got assigned to this guy, I'll never know. But I had to, I had to really... If we, me and him walked in sober to a bar together, I'd scope out the bar. (laughs) 
I said, all right, man, let's go over here and sit somewhere where I could jerk him out the door if I had to, if he started his trouble. And I've had a few friends like that. Uh, another one, uh, I've worked several places with him. But he was the same way, and he was from Alabama. And we were working in Minnesota. And we walked into this bar. It was a karaoke bar. I used to go in there and do the crazy okey. And he seen these guys wearing the Confederate flag bandanas. And it just, and he went up to them and asked them where they was from. And they was from Minnesota. And it just set him off. And he was already three sheets to the wind. It set him off. He did not like that at all. And personally, I didn't really care for it either. But he was wanting to fight. And he, again, he's a little guy. Uh. And I was out, it was me, my brother, and another pressman, and then him. And so we was able to keep, you know, keep him held back and whatever. But we got out in the parking lot, and he just was fighting with us, trying to get loose. We stuck him in the trunk of the guy's car all the way home. We picked him up, put him in the trunk, and he didn't come out till we got home. And he was already passed out when we got there. That's how drunk he was. But I always tried to maintain, you know, my composure in a bar because you never know what, who's going to walk in, what kind of situations you get in. But I'll tell you, you know, I, I don't, I don't miss it. I don't miss to me going in a bar right now. Does uh, it doesn't even sound fun? And if I did. If, I mean, we don't even have any around here. The nearest bar to me is on the Oklahoma line, which would take me 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes to get there. There's nobody going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't even drink no more. So no chance of me doing that. But I guess if I was, it would be a, a tight bar like that, and I would only go in for probably maybe one or two. But don't do that no more. So I don't know if you got any good bar stories. That's probably going to be too long to type in the comments, but uh, uh, there's so many more, so many more things I've seen, and especially in the military. Uh, when you go in with a bunch of guys, uh, when you're in the military, and back then they were pretty lenient. Now, even towards the end of the, uh, my, you know, when I got out towards the end, they were getting pretty strict very strict on it so and it was getting to the point where if you looked intoxicated you didn't get on the base when you were coming back before in the early 80s they didn't care they didn't care one way or another but now it's it's a whole different ball game which is a good thing you know but you know military guys they gotta go out and have a little fun nothing wrong with that but uh yeah they're they're cracking down on all that. So thanks for watching, guys. Hey, it was a subject. Happy trails.